there's kind of three important areas in innovation, sort of the market application, the technology and implementation, which involves typically knowing how industry works and you know, more of an operations kind of thinking uh, behind that element, right? So I think in the 90s, people started experimenting a lot because they're trying to produce more startups faster. This, oh, we need a technical person, we need a business person, maybe we need eventually some operations person. And I could see why people tried that. Of course, the history's filled with failures of those um, initial teams forming in such a discrete manner. And the reason is because innovation process, we talked before about iteration and making decisions on the iterations, right? So if you iterate, you say, okay, I advanced this thing, it doesn't quite fit in that market. Remember that process, social process inside the company or, or inside you know, whatever you're working with, whichever organization you're working in. And you have to come to agreement, right? If somebody is only you know, thinking about and has experience in technology and somebody's only you know, been in business and only thinks about business and they can't see things from the other person's perspective, it pretty much is very difficult to move forward uh, in, in, if you're doing a, you know, a innovation that's going to make a, a, a more fundamental difference, right? So, so I think optimally if you could have people experience in a couple of those categories, so if you're a business person used to be an engineer or your engineer spent some time you know, selling something before or working in industry and you have um, a, a technical person maybe that went into operations and knows the industry well, that's the kind of team that would be optimal if you can if you can actually achieve it, because then as they iterate and work together, they can make decisions together and see things from each other's perspective, and and you can converge and form you know really strong team over time, and then you can hire the right kinds of people because you'll be in agreement over that too, because you'll see where you're failing and you can understand you know each one of those elements what's missing, um, you know, tough to achieve that. But um, at least if you can grow together, then you can learn those other pieces maybe on the fly. And then if everybody's understanding about that, you can grow to, to make decisions together. So that's typically more what has to happen. But I think you know, good advice is to think about what the optimal team needs to be. And either you can get it up front or you can grow into it, then you have a much higher chance for success. The biggest challenge is when we we're talking about uh, forming these optimal teams and you're lucky enough to have two or three people that do have that shared experience in different areas of the innovation process. So some people have business experience and, and technology and other people are the inverse. Um, you, you really make huge progress, but you have to hire people. And I think um, as you bring in other folks, uh, you can oftentimes have uh, challenging management issues. And I would say that's one of the, 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 the hardest things you have to get right. It's very difficult to do, but it's a necessity. And, and kind of going through that process of figuring out how to uh, pick the right people. And then, you know, I always say, I used to think when I started that um, there was some magical interview process. And people are actually experimenting, if you look at Google and places like that, they're actually trying to put into their interview process some things up front that are much uh, repre or representative of what goes on inside the job because you really need to see people work and interact before you can tell if they're going to fit in. So, uh, but, but without such a great process, I think the main thing is the, the best part of interviewing is, is having a good um, firing process, right? because you have to do that, and that is very challenging. So you make mistakes, and the company's very small, and you can't really handle those mistakes. And uh, really, I would say almost every one of the most challenging um, situations I've been is always that, is, is encountering early personnel issues where we're trying to increase the size of the team, and, and, and maybe we have some, some mistakes that we made. I think from a systemic or you know, maybe the overused term, but I think it's a good one is the ecosystem point of view. I think at the, at the highest level, people underappreciate the importance of, of the, to have the need for innovation. 
and to have the freedom to pursue it. So I, I think, you know, what we're doing here is our understanding of innovation is advancing and we're trying to optimize that and teach people at MIT how to do that better and, and teach them earlier so that it's not a discovery halfway through their career. That's how we improve productivity and efficiency and, and people find their, their calling sooner. Um, and, and I think that, uh, um, you know, m w w not all of us are there yet by definition, but I think the leading edge is telling us for sure that those two things, that the, the having a system where you need innovation and then one where you have the uh, freedom, entities and people have the freedom to pursue that um, is very limited in the world actually. So if you go around and look at many different kinds of systems, there's many, many uh, areas, regions or countries that are essentially wanting technology in an abstract sense to advance certain goals, but it never translates over to the economic side. And the reason is because they lack those two things. You know, the freedom to pursue in the, uh, innovation from companies and individual point of view as well as the need to do so, right? The need is, is for example, if you, if you have a, a predetermined central planning system that's completely ossified, there's no need for innovation by definition because as long as I know you and you know me, not, there doesn't need to be any innovation, right? At least, of course, for some period of time before full collapse happens, right? So I think, I think one of the interesting things, people picture these things being isolated, that, that you know, um, the ecosystem in other senses, in a financial or political sense, are isolated from innovation, but it turns out that they all have to work together. And then you see that institutions, so people talk about this a lot, that the institutions have to be um, in the country set up for being able to, to participate in and understand the value of innovation process. And, um, and again, that's, that's, that's kind of rare. So, you know, but I would say that um, how uh, successful places, how do, we, how do they acquire this? They acquire it through successful waves of innovation, actually, right? So, um, you know, I think from a bottom up point of view, if you create important innovations and create an economy around that, it puts the other institutions in place. And I think that's an underappreciated sequence that um, will continue to happen as we go forward. And, and you'll see ecosystems get um, better and better. Um, just laying it down to, you know, say universities and companies, um, you'll see macroeconomic waves go through different parts of the world. And at the end of the day, you need everybody having to participate in the ecosystem and innovation one way or another. But you'll see times where corporations have monopolies or particular strength and, and then they, and often they stop investing in the future, which means they take themselves out of the ecosystem and then universities can't do it on their own. Right or universities withdraw and decide that you know they're they don't need to think about the outside world you know so in history these things keep on happening over and over the important thing is when everybody's participating in the greater ecosystem to try to make uh, new things happen that benefits people's lives that's when you see highest productivity highest growth and uh, the income for all rising and so I think you know that's what you have to strive for. And you know, different parts of the world over history at different times have had these conditions. It's it's hard to imagine a world where uh, you know you're not going to pursue innovation, right? So I just want to encourage you to move forward because at the end of the day, no matter what you think you want to do, you'll always eventually get at a point where you say, "I want to change this," or "I want to make that happen," or "I wish this were that way," and all, the answer to all those uh, statements is that you know, innovation makes it that way, right? So um, I think people think they can escape innovation sometimes, and, and if you're probably listening to this uh, clip, you're probably motivated for it, but uh, really there's no avoiding it, so you should get out there and do it and uh, change the world.